Number four then from the 2009 higher paper two, circles question. <laughs> First part, just for one mark, show that this point actually lies in that circle. Well, that's a coordinate equation. You only get to be on the graph of this if you obey that rule. If the x coordinate plus one squared and the y coordinate minus two squared comes to 100, so you just test that. If I put in 510, what do I get? I'll have 5 plus 1 squared plus 10 minus 2 squared, which is 6 squared and 8 squared, which is 36 and 64, which equals 100, which means that P lies on the circle. Or maybe I could give it a name, the circle 1. B. PQ is a diameter of this circle. Find the equation of the tangent at Q. Well, that means I need the coordinates of Q and the coordinates of the centre. Well, the coordinates of the centre I can get straight away from here and I can just state that because it would be x minus the x-coordinate, y minus the y-coordinates of the centre. So that's x take away negative 1 and that's y take away 2. So the centre of the circle, if I show it there, is negative 1, 2. Next, how can you find Q? Well, you could play around with the midpoint formula in that you know the centre but you don't know one of the outside parts. Or, <coughs> or you could just use displacements. You could just say, how do you get from P to C? It'll be the same to get from C to Q. So I could say this, to go from C to Q is the same as to go from P to C, and I'll just put those down numerically. How do you go from P to C? From 5 to negative 1, you have to go back 6. From 10 to 2, you have to go down 8. Which means that going from C to Q will be take off 6 and take off 8. So that means that Q is going to be removing 6 from that is negative 7. Removing 8 from that is going to be negative 6. Then, for the equation of this tangent, I'll need the gradient. So the gradient, I'll just call that CQ. So the gradient CQ would be difference in Y over difference in X, but the number's conveniently just here. So I could say that way around, 2 take away negative 6 over negative 1 take away negative 7. So that will be 2 plus 6 is 8, over negative 1 plus 7 is 6, which is 4 upon 3. But that means straight away that the gradient of the tangent is going to be negative of the reciprocal, negative 3 quarters. Then for the equation of this tangent, I've got what I need. There's the point on it, there's the gradient. So for the tangent, I'm going to have y minus b equals mx minus a y minus the y coordinate, whoop, so that's y take away the negative 6, I'll just abbreviate that to plus 6, is negative 3 quarters times x minus the x coordinate, take away negative 7, I'll just put that as plus 7, multiplying by the 4, leaving the negative on top, will be 4y plus 24, so that leaves the negative 3 to multiply them, negative 3x minus 21, and then, not really needing this again, I could put that into any form I like, and it will just put it all over to one side. So I've got 3x plus 4y plus 45 equals 0. Now part C, two circles, C2 and C3, touch the circle, C1, I'll just call it centre C1 here, at Q. The radius of these circles are each twice the radius of this. So these circles are twice the size. What are the equations of those two circles? Well, that simply must mean that if they touch, one could touch externally, one could touch internally. One could touch externally, one could touch internally. So what are the equations of these two circles? It doesn't specify which is the external and which is the internal. It just says C1 and C2, C2 and C3. So I'll call that C2, I'll call that C3. 
I want the equation of a circle, so that means I need to have its centre and its radius. Well, let's get the sizes again. I'll put this down here. So what was the centre of this once again? It's the opposite of that and the opposite of that. X minus the X coordinate, Y minus the Y coordinate. And the radius is quite simple. It's the square root of 100, which is 10. Which means I know the radii of these two circles are both 20. Now, what about the centres? Well, P must be the centre of C3. Because this distance here being 20 is the same as the radius. So I can say, well, I'll put my C3 down first of all then. So for C3, that means I know that the centre must be 510, and the radius, call it R2, must be 2 times 10, which is 20. So for this circle, it would be x minus the x-coordinate squared, y minus the y-coordinate squared, equals the radius squared, which is 400. For C2, just unfortunately named them that way round, well, again, its radius is going to be 20. Now its centre will be here. That's a distance of 20. That was a distance of 20. Which means that whatever the move was to go from P to Q, it'll be the same to go from Q to its centre, which I think I'll call C2. So I can make this statement then. I could say Q to C2 is the same as P to Q. And from P to Q is, from 5 to negative 7 is, go back 12. From 10 to negative 16 is, go back 16. So to get C, I'll go 12 back and 16 down from Q. I'll just put a wee note here. Q is negative 7, negative 6. So the centre I'm looking for will be 12 back from this. So I'll now be at negative 19 and 16 down from that. So that will be negative 22. And again, the radius is still the same. The centre's there. The radius is the same as the other one, which is 20. So its equation will be x take away the x-coordinate. So it will be plus 19 all squared. y minus the y-coordinate. So it will be plus 22 all squared is again 400. There it is.